When I've discovered it, I spent four months consuming as much as I could, except food. I lost 26 pounds on the highly inadvisable diet of obsession. These open, borderless, decentralized, censorship-resistant... And the reason it's so fascinating is because it isn't what it appears to be at first glance. Greece, Cyprus, Spain, Venezuela, Argentina, Brazil, India, Turkey, Pakistan, the Ukraine. What do these countries have in common? One day you wake up and you discover that the banks are closed. Who benefits in the end? The banks. They get bailed in. You'll be pleased to know that that CEO, as we speak, is facing jail time. No, of course he isn't. Come on. Where have you been? And before long, they will rewrite history. They will rewrite history to say that the reason the banks are failing and the reason the economy is on fire is because you provided an exit, is because Bitcoin exists. They will say the Bitcoin started the fire. We didn't start the fire. If money is speech, if money is a language, and you disconnect it from all other media, and you make it pure speech, pure content, an internet content type, a protocol designation, money over IP. It completely separates it from all of these previous notions of nations, sovereign issuers, institutions that control. Because Bitcoin is not going after replacing national currencies. Oh no, it's doing something far more dangerous. It's encouraging people to put their savings outside the system. Bitcoin introduces a platform on which you can run currency as an application on a network without any central points of control. A system completely decentralized like the internet itself. It is not money for the internet, but the internet of money. The internet of money was launched on January 3rd, 2009. Do not underestimate this.